Yeah, so at the show we have our Nexat propulsion unit and on top of it now we have our harvesting, we call it the Nexco. These are uh, kind of just uh, inter in internal words. We haven't started to market it yet. There'll be a different name, but uh, the Nexat unit can carry a harvester, a uh, combine, a uh, sprayer, a uh, planter, seeder, tillage, uh, virtually every primary component on your farm. Uh, we looked at the current status of tractors and combines and they just keep getting bigger and bigger and they've kind of met the limits of their ergonomic ab ability. Um, the major manufacturers are spending a decade to try to make a bigger machine to eke out small increases. And so we kind of wrote a clean drawing board and decided how do we change it? And we started from the ground up with this current design. So the focus is to do all the primary functions, which would be ground prep, uh, nutrient application, a sprayer or, or uh, granular, um, harvesting and uh, planting, seeding. And, and so what you're looking at is a machine and most people talk about the features and benefits of a machine, but the true benefit we offer is to improve the health of the soil um, by reducing compaction, staying on a 50 foot wide tram line and never ever going over the middle 50 feet and it's uh, focused on automation. And you see a cab on the machine, but the cab is there mostly just to allow the farmer or operator to ride along. The machine will navigate autonomously, uh, A, B line, turn around the headlands. Um, we don't need a square field. It could be the shape of a duck or whatever. Uh, so we'll plan in a path. We'll use uh, AI, fancy word, but uh, plot in the best and most efficient path through the field so that we can stay off of areas that might be compacted. With that, we get better moisture penetration, more nutrients deep in the soil, deeper roots. Um, after a few years of use, we find less need for synthetic nutrients, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and some micronutrients. And it's easier on the operator. Uh, you'll ride along and you'll, you no, don't need to navigate, you'll just watch the process of the harvest and be able to intervene. Um, maybe there's a deer on your row line during harvest or maybe when you're planting there's uh, the one of the one of the rows is getting plugged and so you can watch that process you know the machine is here but the benefit is the healthier land you know we've had 60 70 years of compaction some people well everyone that's involved in agriculture knows what CTF or control traffic farming is but with conventional processes you can't avoid that you have different wheel tracks um, your tractor is different than your planter is different than your sprayer and so once again going back to the space between uh, our propulsion unit that never gets compacted. So first year, we want to use a deep ripper to try to go and reverse 60 years of compaction. But that's the only time we really prescribe significant tillage. Uh, after that, we're going to use as much no-till as possible. Now, I have to say, being all over the North America, there are some fields where you occasionally have to deal with that root ball with certain types of corn. Um, or are you breaking in a new field? And so you are still gonna need to do tillage occasionally, but nowhere near as frequently as conventional methods. Okay. We started in the Ukraine with our first machine in 2017. Uh, for, for four years after that, we did all four functions of farming. Um, once the war broke out, we changed our focus uh, out of necessity. We were gonna put the, the, the machine we had there on a truck and haul it out of the Ukraine, but we thought it looked too much like military equipment and we'd get destroyed. It sounds funny, but that's true. And so we left it in the shed there and built two more units rapidly and moved to East and West Germany to uh, Leipzig and Dresden. And um, after that, we decided to bring a unit to the US and make the US our primary focus of product development. Um, the US market is the most demanding worldwide for, for many reasons, uh, also the most important. And so we landed last year in uh, South Dakota with the machine in containers and put it together and harvested for the first time. We harvested wheat, soybeans, and canola. Uh, that was a track machine. This is a wheeled machine. This year I brought two more machines in, um, mostly assembled on container ships. We brought one up the St. Lawrence Seaway to Duluth and the other one into Cleveland and drove them on the road to our location. The wheeled unit, you can road faster than the track unit. Um, we know that our electric drives will allow us to go 25 miles an hour, but we've restricted road speed to 18 at this point. Uh, we're concerned about potential overheating. Until we prove it, we're going to keep the restriction down.
So this year we're gonna, we've already harvested wheat. Next week we'll be harvesting canola in Northern North Dakota near Lignite. And then we'll be back to South Dakota to start the soybean harvest. Uh, I didn't mention we planted this spring and did some ground prep. Um, and it's, it's so new. We've, we've heard a lot of uh, positive things and negative things and that's why we're here. Um, we need feedback from the best farmers. And we're not looking at all the farmers. Uh, we're looking at the best 5%. It doesn't mean the biggest 5%, but we're looking at people that are concerned about the quality of the soil and multi-generational farms. It operates like a locomotive, if you're familiar. It's not a conventional tractor. We have an engine. Uh, we have two 550 horsepower engines that provide power or that run the generator. The generator creates electricity. There's four generators and each of those generators have a specific electric drive on the wheel. And with that, we have a much more efficient method of running these implements. Um, immediate uh, fuel savings of about 20% wow. um, compared to conventional methods. And so with those electric drives, we don't have a transmission, we don't have a lot, an awful lot of other things that conventional equipment has, much like electric vehicles don't have the complexities of the standard internal combustion vehicles. But we know we're in a different environment than road vehicles. We have a very demanding um, ecosystem. We have to run 10 or 12 hours a day, huge torque demands. And so that's why we've used the concept of a locomotive as opposed to electric car.